other things um, the, the Trump administration have done to um, tr hit the drums of, um, of war uh, going in the Middle East. I have pleasure in welcoming our next speaker, the convener of Stop the Wall, Lindsay German. Yes. Thanks very, very much, everybody, for coming here tonight. I just want to say this is the beginning of a campaign. This is the first of many, I hope not too many, demonstrations and protests and handing in letters and sitting down in the road and all the different things we're going to have to do over the next few months because it seems to me that what is happening is that the likelihood of conflict in the Middle East, the likelihood of conflict of war with Iran is getting greater all the time and just because for one week it may seem to recede and then it comes back a week later, I don't think we should ignore the overall threat. And I say this for two reasons. The first is to do with the people in Downing Street who don't even have the decency to accept a letter written by people in a democracy protesting a government policy. And I think that is very, very serious, particularly at a time when we're having a Tory party leadership contest between two people, both of whom will be very, very keen to get behind Donald Trump and a threat on Iran. There's Boris Johnson and then there's Jeremy Hunt, who is at the moment the Foreign Secretary, and who has been much, much more supportive of what America is doing than any other of the European powers. Indeed, today, France came out and said that the America is not serious about negotiating and talking to Iran. That's absolutely right. This is something that our government should make absolutely clear now. If Trump wants a war, led on by the neocons like John Bolton, we are not going to follow the United States into a war. And that needs to be the first thing that we say absolutely clearly. We need to say it clearly for two reasons. Firstly, that we've had the experience of Iraq. We've had the experience of Afghanistan. We've had the experience of Libya. They have all been interventions we were told were absolutely necessary, would make the world a safer place. They have done exactly the opposite. And we cannot allow this to keep happening. We cannot allow the Iranian people to suffer in a way that people across the Middle East, in Yemen, in Syria, in, uh, in Libya, in all those places, in Iraq, are suffering now. And therefore we say that very, very strongly. But we also have to say something else, that it's always portrayed just as a kind of abstract conflict. You know, there's two sides in this conflict going on. There's Iran who are bad and maybe Trump's gone a little bit too far. Let's look at where this present conflict comes from. As Carol has said, it comes from the tearing up of the nuclear agreement, which Trump did unilaterally and with absolutely no justification in terms of what the Iranians were doing or indeed in terms of the treaty itself. It is also coming from these draconian sanctions that he is putting on people. Trump is waging economic warfare around the world. He has sanctions on a whole number of countries, including Venezuela and on Iran. And these are meant to be the prelude for war. They're meant to soften up in order to get regime change. And if they can't do this by sanctions methods, they will do it by war. And therefore, what they're talking about doing is sanctions which are making it almost impossible for Iran to trade its oil and have already made the currency in Iran much, much weaker than it was even a year ago. People in Iran are suffering very, very much as a result of these sanctions and this will only get worse. So all of these reasons, we should look at this and say, who is the aggressor here? The aggressor is the United States of America. They say, and quite rightly, they say the Iranians did shoot down a drone last week in the Straits of Hormuz. A letter in The Guardian put this very well yesterday. They said, how should Trump respond? Well, if an Iranian aircraft carrier goes up the coast of the United States of America and releases a drone over American territory, then Trump's got the right to, shout, sh to shoot that down. Yeah. That is a quid pro quo. What he doesn't have the right to do is fill the Middle East with his bases with his aircraft carriers, with his drones, his military fighters, and expect people to accept this without any, uh, without any uh, opposition to it. So I'm making this statement now on behalf of Stop the War. We are utterly opposed to any war against Iran. We will do everything we can to mobilize against any war. 
with Iran. We are against the sanctions. We're against the tearing up of the deal. There is always an alternative to war, and that is negotiation and trying to find peace. And the very least that any country should do is go out of their way to make that happen. They are not doing this at the moment, and it is shameful of the British government, which has such a terrible record of intervention over the last two decades, and which lies about what is still going on in Afghanistan and Libya and Iraq and all these countries, to believe that they can just pull the wool over people's eyes and do it again. I believe actually this time, people in Britain in very large numbers understand exactly how dangerous this threat is. They understand who is behind this threat. We demonstrated in very large numbers against Donald Trump only just earlier this month, and we will be doing it again. So please do everything you can to support this campaign. Sign up as members or supporters of Stop the War. Make sure that you're involved in all the campaigns. Sign the petitions. We will be organizing national and local events, so go on our website. Do everything we can now to talk to your family, to your friends, to your workmates, to your fellow students. We are opposed to this war. We're not going to allow it to happen. Thank you very much.